moving on from this fucking story to another one. Activists at Just Stop Oil have thrown tomato soup on Van Gogh's sunflowers at the National Gallery and glued themselves to a wall. Security? Security? I mean, there's glass. It's not even the real painting. It doesn't really matter. I just, I, I find a lot of these uh, activists to be, you know, I mean, they're doing, they're right for their anger. Their frustration is correct. I, I feel like the, that, that kind of protest oftentimes is just like very, almost like self-defeating. It's performative. It's cringe. Um, but, you know, more than what you're doing. So good on them, I guess. worth more than justice are you more concerned about the protection of a pay more people are tweeting about this than the guy who fucking self-immolated on the steps of the supreme court earlier this year yeah that's because this kind of this kind of activism is seen as cringe by the broader majority whereas that kind of activism act that, well that's not even activism at that point that's like you know literally killing yourself okay that is dark that is scary that's the and it, it has the capacity to create like uh, copycats. So the media rarely ever covers that kind of thing. Media doesn't want to cover that kind of thing. That's the difference. This, on the other hand, uh, is is received as like cringe and performative for by the broader majority, by the broader uh, public. And therefore, it undermines, in the eyes of people who are not going to have their minds changed anyway, uh, it undermines the, the cause itself, which is why the media loves elevating this shit. Painting or the protection of our planet and people. The cost of living crisis is part of the cost of oil crisis. Fuel is unaffordable to millions of cold, hungry families. They can't even afford to heat a tin of soup. Some people are saying is an op, by the way. I saw that she also threw up the fucking OK sign when she got arrested. That girl. Well, shit. Just Stop Oil is funded by a philanthropy organization, the Climate Emergency Fund, which was founded by oil heiress a Aileen Getty. And now everyone's fucking, let's not forget what we're talking about, extinction. Don't we have a responsibility to take every means of trying to protect life on Earth? Aileen Getty lists stunning townhouse bought three years ago from Adam Dell. Extremely rich people are not like the rest of us. They buy and sell high-end properties like the way the rest of us buy shoes. And Aileen Getty, scion of the oil family, is a great example to wit. In June 2019, she purchased a stunning, stunning townhouse in New York's West Village from venture capitalist Adam Dell for $19 million. Now, just three years later, the serial buyer and seller is off the pasture is new, asking $25 million for the spiffy house. Listed with Compass is Carl Gambino. Hey, Gambino, how you doing? Fuck you. The townhouse is beautifully situated on a cobbled street that's neither too far west nor too east. You know what I'm saying? It's close to the trendy meatpacking fucking district, the Hudson River Park, and all the fantastic shopping and restaurants at Greenwich Village. Hey, how you doing? Fuck you. Yeah, I have absolutely no faith in this group after learning who's paying their bills. Sorry, the billionaires that fund these photo ops create more damage to the climate themselves in their personal and professional lives, and this kind of action will prevent, and they know that. I mean, she might be personally conflicted by their main source of income for many, many fucking years. And that's why she's trying to like do the best thing. But it, it, even in the most charitable take, it seems like uh, even the most charitable take about this group, uh, it seems like it's like, uh, even if it's well-intentioned, it just, uh, it, it just misses the mark a little bit. You know what I'm saying?
Conspiracy brain telling me the souping of the Van Gogh was an op to make environmental activists look ridiculous. Even if your message is you care about the painted environments and the real environment, it's a shitty way to get that point across. That's the old bullshit argument that personal consumer behavior is how you stop climate change. Yeah. The ruling class gets active as movements to become district, distracted and rudderless so that normal people st see stupid shit like this and discard problems. Wait, are these naked? Some of these will sometimes be naked. <laughs> Oh, these are crazy. What the fuck? They just sat on the fucking they sat on the on the on the raceway. That's insane. <sighs> the good kind of climate activism is not something I can say openly here, okay? That's all I'll leave it at. But also, it's not just about the good kind of uh, climate activism. It's also about 100% community organizing, labor union organizing, organizing workplaces so you have a mechanism of pushback and accountability that you can demand from your leaders that will inevitably move away from renewable energy or move away from fossil fuels into renewable energy. It's not going to happen with... You know, one person fucking doing, uh, with one person doing even the good kind of climate activism. Okay? Not. We already covered the uh, the the Eileen Getty angle. They also sprayed a cop building. Yeah, I saw that. That one isn't as cringe. I'm doing this because we live in a country where you are innocent until proven guilty, and yet we are holding innocent protesters, peaceful protesters, in prison, and they all they're doing is standing up to the corrupt government and the corporation. Joshua Smith is in prison, and he's been there for seven months, and... They're doing the same as PETA to them. Any press is good press because people will talk at all. Yeah, I mean, pretty much. You see the vegan protesters that got hit by one of the Rams players a few weeks ago? Wait, what? No. But also, <laughs> it's kind of interesting because it's like, So it's interesting because like that's oil, you know what I mean? That's like, isn't that petroleum? Like that spray is literally fucking, isn't that petroleum based? Anyway, so is the glue technically. Now, of course, it's inescapable. It's inescapable. That's the point. Our reliance on fossil fuels makes it so that it's literally inescapable. <laughs> 